Namaste everybody and thank you very much for coming along to one more talk on a Monday night although you probably view it um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. <laughs> anyway before I start I will attempt to offer my humble obeisances to my spiritual master Jagat Guru Siddhasarupananda. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Shimati Siddha Swarupa Nanda Pamaham Suti Namane Bhajashi Krishna Shetanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adoi Tagadha Shri Vasade Gobakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Jai Shiva Prabhupada so tomorrow, which is Tuesday in Australia, it is Rathayatra. So I was going to talk tonight a little bit about Lord Jagannath because I am thinking there's going to be different celebrations around the world for Rathayatra. So for tonight is going to be about Lord Jagannath. You know, Lord Jagannath, and the Rathayatra festival, they're actually very poignant for the Gudiya Vaishnavas because for many reasons actually. And one of them is that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he resided in Jagannath Puri, in the seaside town of Jagannath Puri. He resided there for 24 years. And in that time he would daily go and visit Lord Jagannath in the wonderful temple that's there. But also there are many other Vaishnavas coming in this wonderful parampara who also had a connection with Lord Jagannath in Puri. For example, um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, when he was um, a magistrate in that um, district there, he was actually in charge of the temple there and he made many reforms. He tightened up their scheduling because everything had become rather lackadaisical in some ways. So he tightened up a lot of those things. And he also um, really looked at a lot of the Brahmins that were there and made sure that they weren't doing things incor incorrectly. Um, there was a bit of cheating going on and things like that. So he really tidied up the whole worship of Lord Jagannath. Isn't that wonderful? Our great grandfather, spiritual master. <laughs> and of course, we all know the story of his son, Bimla Pashad, who went on to become a Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati. When Bimla Pashad was born into the family of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, when he was six months old, the Rathayatra procession was happening. And um, Bhaktivinotha Kaur's wife, she took the opportunity when the cart stopped. Um, she was invited up onto the cart and she took her little six month old child up there. And Lord Jagannath's garland fell down and it fell and encircled the little child. And this was taken as a great auspicious signed by all the Brahmins, all the devotees that were there, that Lord Jagannath was really welcoming Bimla Pashad, welcoming who would become Bhakti Siddhanta. And then there's Bhakti Vedanta. From the time he was a little boy, he loved to worship Lord Jagannath and he loved the Rathayatra um, festivals that happen annually. And when he was just, I think he was like five years old or something like that, um, he organized in his neighborhood there a Rathayatra festival. And he organized all the children as part of it. He organized the mums who were doing all the cooking for it. He um, organized the dads. Um, it was really rather marvelous. And uh, all the children, everybody had a wonderful time. So they pulled a cart with little Jagannath Balam Subhadra through the streets of the neighborhood. And all, all the neighbors came out to see this wonderful uh, festival that he really tried to do it 
as closely as possible for the situation as to how the larger scale Ratha Yatra festival would take place. So there's, there's actually many wonderful stories. The Chaitanya Tritamrita is full of these beautiful stories of Lord Chaitanya interacting with Lord Jagannath and especially at the Ratha Yatra festivals. Uh, for those of you who've maybe never watched a Ratha Yatra festival or don't know much about them, it's really that one time of the year when they bring Lord Jagannath, his brother Balaram, and his sister, Lady Subhadra, they bring them out of this ancient temple. And they had these chariots made. Every year they made fresh, new, every year. Very specific to, I mean, there's whole manuals that have been passed down in time of every part of the chariots, the dimensions of them. And so the chariots are made fresh every year and then they bring... Lord Jagannath onto a chariot and Lady Subhadra onto a chariot and Lord Balaram onto his chariot. And they have all these ceremonies that take place. And you know, currently, you know, in the last few years, the last 10 years or whatever, there's like a million people line the streets to watch this festival. A million people. It's amazing, isn't it? So. And, and, and Jagannath Puri, the city of Jagannath Puri, is designed for the pleasure of Lord Jagannath. He's like in charge of Puri, the city of Puri. As I said, it's a seaside um, town. And it's got this huge street, an avenue called the Grand Avenue that's in the front of the temple. And it runs down for a couple of miles down. And... It is very, very wide. Now, during normally, during the everyday usage of that road, they have worked out how they can, they put these divides up down the middle of the road. And it's still two wide roads, but they put a divide down there that's easily taken away. Um, they have um, like little policemen's huts, but they're on wheels, so that can be gotten out of the way. Everything can be cleared out for Lord Jagannath's Ratha Yatra festival. So, and then Lord Jagannath, ba Lady Subhadra and Balaram, they get pulled in their, char in their chariots down for about two miles down this street. And they come to another temple called the Gundicha temple. And you can read about that in the Chaitanya Trita and Rita with Lord Chaitanya having these pastimes with these devotees when they were washing the Gundicha temple. So they take them down to the Gundicha temple and every year, Lord Jagannath, Lady Subhadra and Balaram, they get ill and they have to then reside there at the Gundicha temple for anywhere between seven to 10 days. And all the Brahmins who normally cook for Lord Jagannath in his temple. They all come there, they have the a kitchen, all kitchens all set up for him, and they make special food for him. Um, special herb drinks, uh, special foods, um, so to help him recover. <laughs> it's this wonderful pastime that they're having every and they all get to really um, you know really look after him through this um, couple of days. But you know, when I visited um, Puri many times and, and the residents who live there, they, they tell you openly, you know, if you strike up a conversation with them, you know, a shopkeeper or, you know, somebody at the bank or, you know, whatever. And they always tell you they miss Lord Jagannath so much when he's in the Gundicha temple because nobody can, none, none of the citizens can go there and visit him. Because remember, he's... Um, recovering from his illness so if you know anywhere between seven to ten days they don't get to go and visit lord jagannath and they're all pining away for from him for him because normally you know at least twenty thousand people and that can be pilgrims and your local local people who live in puri at least twenty thousand people a day go and visit lord jagannath when he's in his temple 
So all of that stops when he's in the Gundicha temple. So they're just waiting and waiting. It's like, it's like Puri takes a breath, just holds in a breath, waiting. And then when he comes out, oh my gosh, the celebrations as they're taking him back to the temple. So it's, um, gosh, it's, it's just so wonderful. It's so personal. And this um, Rathiatra festival has been going on for millions of years. This is not something that's just been going on for hundreds of years or even thousands of years. This began in such a yuga. So it's been going on for millions of years, this um, wonderful festival. But because of the extraordinary times that we are now living in with this COVID-19, since March 20, March 22, nobody can go into Lord Jagannath's temple. All the big temples in India there, especially like in places with... Um, uh, Lord Jagannath's temple where you're getting 20,000 people a day going in. It's all been stopped. So since March 20, the people have really been very much wanting to see Lord Jagannath. And then just a couple of days ago, the Supreme Court of India ruled there'll be no Rathayatra this year. I, I wrote down what they what the um, Supreme Court judge what he said in the interest of public health and safety of citizens we restrain the state from holding the Rathyatra and associated activities so all the festivals that go on during it for those 10 days we direct that there shall be no Rathyatra this year and then the Supreme Court judge also said Lord Jagannath wouldn't forgive us if we allowed this year's Rathyatra <laughs> so they're feeling that um, because of the COVID-19 that's just ripping through India I mean they don't even know how many people have died from it because they can't do all the testing they can't do all that sort of stuff on any high level and if they held Rathiatra and like you got a million people all jammed in and how many of those would die from the COVID-19 then so the so the Supreme Court judge is saying no Lord Jagannath he wouldn't forgive us if we allowed this so this is very unprecedented times that we're in and that's why I wanted to in honour of Lord Jagannath, talk a little bit about Lord Jagannath tonight, knowing the sadness of all the people who were really would love to be there um, and see Lord Jagannath for Rathiatra, and it's not going to happen. So I've got together um, a couple of quotes from scriptures. You know, I always like to refer back to scriptures um, in the talk. So I've got a couple of quotes from scripture and, and I've also assembled some descriptions of Lord Jagannath, which I hope you'll find very pleasing. Um, so the two scriptures that we're going to just get a few quotes from, obviously Chaitanya Tritamrita. We've got to go to the Chaitanya Tritamrita to get a couple of these wonderful descriptions from and also Sanatana Goswami he wrote a book a famous book called the um, Brihad Bhagavatam Rita and in it he's got quite a few descriptions of Lord Jagannath at that time um, so we'll start off with from the Chaitanya Tritam Rita 2.12 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very thirsty to see the deity of Lord Jagannath. Goranga's eyes became like two bumblebees drinking the honey from the lotus-like eyes of Lord Jagannath, who is Krishna himself. The eyes of Lord Jagannath conquer the beauty of blossoming lotus flowers. 
I hope you can see his eyes here. And his neck defeats the luster of a mirror made of blue sapphires. The chin of Jagannath Swami, tinged with a buff colour, conquers the beauty of the Bandhuli flower. This increases the beauty of Jagannath's mild smiling, which is like lustrous waves of nectar. The luster of Jagannath's beautiful face increases at every moment, and the eyes of hundreds and thousands of devotees drink its honey like bumble its honey like bumblebees. Feeling such great pleasure upon seeing the face of Lord Jagannath, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu forgot everything. A couple of times when I was, you know, reading these quotes from Chaitanya Charitamrita and, and um, scripture and that, they refer to Lord Jagannath's smile, his mild smile. Whereas I always think of his smile as grand, as so all-consuming, so attractive. But they like to describe his mild smile. <laughs> so Sanatana Goswami... He wrote, The moon-like face of Lord Jagannath is beautified with brilliantly shining large round eyes. Jagannath's forehead is decorated with tilak made of gems. His complexion glows like a cloud full of rain and the brilliance of Jagannath's ruby red lips pleases the hearts of all. His irresistible charm is magnified by the moonbeams of boundless mercy emanating from his mild smile. <laughs> so I've got to keep taking sips, remember, so I don't start coughing. So what's really fascinating too when you when you hear about Lord Jagannath in, in Puri, in India there is, Puri is in the state of Orissa. And in Orissa, Lord Jagannath, so in the whole state, not just in Puri, but in the whole state of Orissa, Lord Jagannath is regarded as both the Supreme Lord and the only monarch of that state. They consider him their king. Isn't that wonderful? The king of Puri is seen as a humble servant of Lord Jagannath. So there, you know, you do get your king in Puri. Once again, in the Chaitanya Trita, the story of King Prataparudra. That has many wonderful layers to it. So if you're reading these stories in, in the Chaitanya Trita, read of the king of Prataparudra who wanted to just, have an audience with Lord Chaitanya and it was provided uh, eventually at the end of um, the Rathiyatra festivals or con in connection with the Rathiyatra festival because the king it had been a tradition even before King Prataparuja it had been a, um, a tradition that the king would take a gold handled broom and he would sweep the road in front of Lord Jagannath he would be, he's the humble servant. He's the road sweeper for Lord Jagannath. So King Prataparuja very humbly performed that and, and was sweeping the road very carefully in, in front for Lord Jagannath. And Lord Chaitanya saw him doing that. So it was part of, you know, Lord Chaitanya then coming to a point where he did meet this king. So I would like to read to you now some things I've put together. And there is so much to talk about with Lord Jagannath. You, honestly, you could go for days talking about Lord Jagannath. But I've picked out, cherry picked out a couple of things which I think might warm your heart to hear about uh, some of the, uh, how they look after Lord Jagannath in this temple in Puri. This temple is very, very ancient temple. 
my husband Jamunadas, he was telling me, um, because he's been to Puri many times too, um, to do photography and things like that. And he has got an architectural background, so he was doing like architectural photography for our, our spiritual master. And he was telling me that um, there was a British, I think he was an engineer, British engineer who came to Puri, not necessarily to see Lord Jagannath or anything, but when he saw the temple, the, this big tall spires, the temples there in Puri, um, he could see, because he's an, he was an engineer, he could see that there was going to be a possibility of some collapse of the spire there. And so he designed and organized all the fixing up of the, um, the spire, the very tall spire on top of Lord Jagannath's temple there. Wonderful service that he did, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful service he did. And that's not so, that was just, I don't know the time frame, maybe it was 10 or 15 years ago or whatever. But um, wonderful, I, I very much envied that he was able to serve Lord Jagannath so nicely um, that way. So let's read some things, as I said. First of all, we'll look at the daily worship of Lord Jagannath. So let's enter into now all kinds of aspects in the daily worship of Lord, of Lord Jagannath. For 10 months of the year, the temple doors open at 5 a.m. And for two months, that's from October to November and December to January. For those two months, the doors open at 2 a.m. So Mongolatic then takes place once the temple doors are opened then there's mongolatic so for two months of the year mongolatic is at 2 a.m in the morning amazing so mongolatic follows the opening of the doors and ghee lamps provide a clear darshan of jagannath swami's sweet face because they don't have electricity electrical lights in there or anything all of the Every aspect of looking after Lord Jagannath is done traditionally, passed down through the time, going back who knows how far, these methods. So there's no big lights come on, and big you know, um, you know, spotlights and all this sort of stuff when, in the morning for the Arctic, you know, Mongol Arctic in the morning. It's the ghee lamps. And actually ghee lamps are magical, the, the, the glow that they throw out is just beautiful. To, so to see Lord Jagannath early in the morning with the, you know, under the glow of these ghee lamps, wouldn't that be magical? Before the deities are bathed, tooth sticks and tongue scrapers are shown to them for brushing their teeth. <laughs> so, so the Brahmins, you know, who have that job, they bring out some toothpicks and tongue scrapers and they hold them up to Lord Jagannath, Lord Balaram and Lady Subhadra. And remember that story that's uh, in the Chaitanya Tritamrita. It touches on it that one day Lord Chaitanya went to visit Haridas Thakur, who wasn't allowed into the um, temple because he was born in a Muslim family. So Lord, Lord Chaitanya would always go and visit Haridas Thakur afterwards. And that morning he had been given by, from one of the Pujaris, he had been given Lord Jagannath's toothpick, right? That had been offered to him this morning. So Lord Chaitanya comes out and he goes to Haridas Thakur to see Haridas Thakur and it was very hot. It was summertime and Haridas Thakur was sitting outside his hut, but it was very hot out there. So Lord Chaitanya takes this toothpick and he puts it in the ground and it immediately grows up into a bakula tree. So that tree became named as Siddha Bakula. Siddha means mystical. So it's like a mystical bakula tree because the toothpicks are taken from the bakula tree, you see. So it just immediately grew up into a, a bakula tree and giving shade to Haridas Thakur. So that's where the toothpick came from. 
The deities are bathed every day by holding up silver mirrors before them and pouring sanctified water mixed with yogurt, camphor, amla and sandalwood paste. And this is poured over the mirrors. So they don't actually wash the bodies of the deities. They hold up these mirrors in front of them and then they pour these sanctified liquids over the mirror as an offering to them. And then the Brahmins are meditating on that this is being offered to Lord Jagannath to bathe him. Oh, by the way, did I tell you, the deities of Lord Jagannath, Balm Sambhaja, are really big. They're huge deities. They're taller than a person. They're really astounding to see. The deities are regularly dressed in silk or cotton outfits, enhanced with lots of pretty flowers, Tulsi garlands and manjaris. Only sweet-smelling flowers of white, yellow, gold, orange and pink colours are offered to Jagannath Swami. Jasmines, marigolds and pink and white lotuses are his favourites. On normal days, Jagannath wears coloured clothes pertaining to the planetary demigods of that particular day. So astrologically, every day is assigned to a particular demigod, a planet, a presiding planet and the demigod. So every day, on normal days, we'll hear about special days next, but on normal days, the colour of the clothes that he wears pertains to that particular demigod that is, you could say, ruling that day. <laughs> So let's look at the colours that Jagannath wears. On Sunday, Jagannath wears red clothes. That's the sun, Vivishwan. On Monday, he wears white clothes decorated with black spots. That's for the moon. On Tuesday, he wears clothes that have five colours, primarily pink for Mars. Wednesday, he wears sky blue colour for Mercury. On Thursday, he wears yellow for Jupiter. On Friday, he wears white or silver for Venus. And on Saturday, he wears black, dark blue and violet. It's like purple colour for Saturn. So they're all the colours of the clothes. Amazing, yeah? Now, on 36 special days throughout the year, Jagannath Balaram and Subhadra wear outfits to celebrate the pastimes of Krishna, Rama, Nishrimadev, and so on. So there are 36 special days that are in connection with pastimes of the Supreme Lord and his incarnations. And so on those days, they dress and they have these amazing outfits made um, where like, when it's Lord Nishrimadev's appearance day, which we just had, what, a, few, you know, a month ago or whatever, when it's Lord Nishrimadev's appearance day, they dress the deities and actually Lord Jagannath looks like Lord Nishrimadev, the way they dress him. And then so on and so on with all the different outfits that he wears. He... Lord Jagannath is just this wonderful embodiment of festivals, isn't he? Okay, what next have I got here for you? Oh, every night before taking rest, Jagannath Swami wears a unique outfit. So just before he's going to take rest, this is not while he's sleeping, this is before he takes rest, they dress him in this outfit composed of long Tulsi garlands and, and crowns, ornaments and decorations, all made of the most colourful and fragrant flowers. So these outfit that they dress him in, all made from these flowers, contains eight different floral 
pieces. So a flower forehead decoration, a flower garland tea luck, flower ornaments representing hands and fingers, shark shaped flower earrings, an 18 inch, 18 inch diameter <clears throat> heart shaped flower piece to cover his heart. So a heart shaped flower piece that covers his heart. And it's 18 inches, 18 inches about that big. Yeah, that's how big it is. And it goes over his heart. <clears throat> a flower nose decoration, a crown of many Tulsi garlands tied on a bamboo frame. So they make a bamboo frame, you know, weaving it all with bamboo, and then they thread all these Tulsi garlands for his head. And then finally, a 12 foot long, that's really long, 12 foot long, flower garlands stretching from arm to arm. So Lord Jagannath, he has his arms like that, and they have this 12 foot flower garland that's draping down from arm to arm. So, and then just before taking rest, Jagannath Swami's head is covered with a 12 foot long red silk cloth inscribed with verses from the Gita Govinda. The Gita Govinda is this wonderful um, scripture written by Jayadev and it's got all these wonderful stories in it about Krishna and the Gopi girls. So they have this red silk cloth inscribed, so it's all written on the cloth verses from the Gita Govinda and that's wrapped around his head just before he goes to sleep. Lastly, at 1 a.m. the temple doors close. Everyone then goes home happy and satisfied. And there's one final duty. When they, when they shut the temple doors, there is a Brahmin and his specific duty is at night he puts a seal wax over the door you know where the where the key is he puts a seal wax over it so that they know if anybody ever got in there they'd have to break the seal wax you see and they can't you know put it all back together again it's you know seal waxes they've got patterns on them and that so that was that's the final thing um, before they all go home. And then that Brahmin comes back and he's the one in the morning, like 5 a.m. in the morning, 10 months of the year, and 2 a.m., which is only an hour later <laughs> for two months of the year, he's the one who breaks that seal. That's his service to Lord Jagannath. He's like a Kshatriya Brahmin sort of thing. Yeah, he's guarding Lord Jagannath. Sanatan Goswami, he wrote, at night, there was a grand festival with Jagannath Swami dressed and ornamented in elaborate splendor. You know, all those beautiful flower garlands we read about. At the end of the festival, palmfuls of flowers were offered and then it was time to leave the temple. So that's the end of the day for Lord Jagannath. And now let's read about the Pujaris who look after Lord Jagannath. We're kind of, we kind of assume maybe um, that the word Pujari just means somebody who's offering Arctic because that's sort of the only way that we use that terminology. But actually the word Pujari means worshipping. And so all the people all the Brahmins, they're all Brahmins who look after Lord Jagannath, all the Brahmins who look after Lord Jagannath, no matter what their service is, they're called Pujaris because all their services, doesn't matter what it is, it's, it's them worshipping Lord Jagannath. 
the, the, the Brahmin who puts that seal on the door. He's worshipping Lord Jagannath. He's serving Lord Jagannath. So, so these are all Pajaris. And there are 36 categories of duties for Pajaris. So it's not just the offering of the um, Arctic ceremonies. And so I've, I've just listed some of them for you out of the 36. So obviously opening and closing the temple doors, as we heard about. And there are also door guards. There are actually guards who are on the out, you know, down, down on the very uh, perimeters of the um, compound. Lord Jagannath's temple is inside this big walled compound and there's many things inside that compound. There's the kitchens, there's other temples inside that compound. Um, and But there are four gates to the compound, north, south, east and west. And one of them is the major gate because that goes onto the grand road. But each of those gates are guarded. And those guards take that very seriously that they are guarding Lord Jagannath. So that's their Pajari. Decorating the deities, cleaning their clothes, grinding sandalwood, providing yogurt for when they bathe the deities. Remember that was one of the ingredients they pour down on the mirror. Providing water for Jagannath. Jagannath's got a, um, a well that's in that compound and it's got the sweetest of water in that well. And there is a Brahmin, that's what he does. He draws the water out of that well and he makes sure there's water there for Lord Jagannath every day. There is a drummer, that is his job, that is his service to Krishna, uh, to Lord Jagannath. There are those who sing songs to Lord Jagannath and especially there are those who sing the Gita Govinda to Jagannath. There is the cleaning of the temple as we saw in that pastime with Lord Chaitanya cleaning the Gundicha temple. How about these for a, 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 a duty, a Brahminical duty? There is a blacksmith. He makes all sorts of metal things, decorations for Lord Jagannath and a carpenter. Why not? So there was these wonderful descriptions I was reading. Uh, Sanatan Goswami talks about this. In privacy, Jagannath Swami sometimes talks and engages in personal exchanges with his pujaris. 500 years ago, Sanatan Goswami described in his Brihad Bhagavatam Amrita the intimacy shared between Jagannath and his pujaris. He wrote, Sometimes Jagannath jokes with his dearest permanent servants and sometimes he enjoys loving pastimes with them. Lord Jagannath is not a lifeless log. He only pretends like that. Every chance he gets, Jagannath engages in all sorts of sports and tricks with his pujaris and devotees. Jagannath's pujaris continually marvel over how Jagannath Swami frolics like a naughty child one moment and the next poses as a motionless deity. Nevertheless, the Pajaris happily go along with whatever pastimes Jagannath Swami plays at the moment. Either he is active or passive. So wonderful. So, <clears throat> another sip, keep that cough away. I wanted to finish off with a description of Lord Jagannath's kitchen and his Mahaprasadam because this is one of the prominent features about Lord Jagannath, the worship of Lord Jagannath is the Mahaprasadam distribution that's been going on since time immemorial. And some of you will know the story how it originated, you know, with Narada Muni and, and all these wonderful uh, devotees. And Lord Jagannath is really about 
the Shardom distribution. And his, the other feature of Lord Jagannath is this Rathyatra festival where he comes out of the temple every year so that those who cannot go into the temple, uh, maybe because they were born in um, what is considered lowly families, uh, meat-eating families and that, so they can't, but he comes out to see everybody. You see, Haridas Thakur wasn't allowed in there. Here's Haridas Thakur. He was described by Lord Chaitanya as being the giver of the holy names, Namacharya. And so, but he's not allowed in to see Lord Jagannath. So two things, Lord Chaitanya told Haridas Thakur on top of the tall spire, there's this chakra and there's flags and there's a chakra and, and Lord Chaitanya said just seeing that chakra is as good as seeing Lord Jagannath so that takes spiritual appreciation to experience that and understand it but also Lord Jagannath came out every year those 24 years that Lord Chaitanya was residing there Lord Jagannath came out every year Hari does the call for, for many of those times would have been able to see Lord, uh, Lord Jagannath when he came out for Rathayatra. So Lord Jagannath is described as being incredibly merciful form of the Supreme Lord and that wonderful smile that he has. As soon as the devotees see his smile, all the problems that they're experiencing in their life just disappear under the wonderful glow of Lord Jagannath's smile. So we'll read now about, a little bit about the, his kitchen and the, and the um, prasadam. Lord Jagannath's temple kitchen has an astounding 752 wood-burning stoves spread over one acre in the southeast corner of the temple compound. This kitchen compound is then divided into nine kitchens. Remember I said there's no electricity is used in his temple. There's no electricity used in his kitchen. Right. Every day a fire sacrifice is performed in one of the temple kitchens, one of the nine kitchens. Afterwards, the cooks take embers from that sacrificial fire to ignite their individual stoves, remember there's 752 of them, for cooking each day. All the food is cooked in earthen pots. So there'll be Brahmins that that's their job, they make the earthen pots for Lord Jagannath. There'll be those Brahmins who supply the wood for, you know, for burning and the fires for the cooking. Now, 1,000 men work daily in Lord Jagannath's kitchen. 500 of these men attain the status of executive chefs and are the only persons allowed to cook on the stoves. 300 are first string assistants. They are allowed to enter the kitchens to assist the chefs, but they mainly fetch water from the temple well, they wash and clean the earthen pots, and they fill the pots with ingredients. The other 200 assistants are second string. They are not allowed to enter the kitchens, but work in front of the kitchens engaged in tasks such as washing ingredients, cutting vegetables, grating fresh coconut, and stone grinding herbs, ginger, and spice blends. So that's the thousand men every day who work in his kitchen. And there is a further special staff of men who have the single task of transporting the hot clay pots of food from the kitchen to the offering area. Because those pots would be rather heavy too, so they must be quite strong, quite strong men. 
all members of the kitchen staff begin training at the age of 12 after they have received Brahman initiation. They serve for life or until they become too old to perform their duties. Every day, Jagannath Swami is offered 56 items for his pleasure. So this is 56 different types of preparations. Yeah, Nine rice preparations, 14 subjis and curries, nine milk preparations, 11 sweets, and 13 cakes, pancakes, and patties. And that has been going on for a very long time. The standard for the ingredients has remained constant for the last 2,000 years. It hasn't changed. The ingredients have not changed. Or the quality of the ingredients as well has not changed for the last 2,000 years. Ingredients that are considered new world, such as cabbage, potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, papaya, cauliflower, hot chilies, onion and garlic are not used. They consider these new world. And when you look up the history of these, you know, potatoes, um, tomatoes, um, cauliflowers, chilies, they did not come, they were not there in India until, well, each one would have their own history, but they came from places like South America and these other places. And now when you think of Indian cooking, you think of, you know, chilies and, you know, tomato and potato uh, preparations and things like that, but they were not there until very recent in this long history. So they're not used. These recipes, these preparations have not changed for 2000 years. That's what they, the Brahmins will tell you. So they're very careful. Every day, Lord Jagannath's prashadam is sold at his shop. Because it's really interesting when you go into in Puri and you're talking to the people there, they will tell you there's a lot of things there that are owned by Lord Jagannath. Um, there are, it's not just the temple in the temple, this temple compound that is owned by Lord Jagannath. There are shops, there um, is land, you know, where they grow flowers. There is land where they grow all the different vegetables and, and herbs and things like that. They're all owned by Lord Jagannath. So in this, um, just on the outside of one of these gates, the uh, main gate, there's a shop there that's owned by Lord Jagannath. And the shop is called the Happiness Mart. <laughs> and it is there that the pilgrims and the people of um, Puri can go there each day and they can purchase Lord Jagannath's Maha Prashadam. So when these cooks on these 725 stoves, you know, when they cook, they cook a lot of food for Lord Jagannath's pleasure. And then all this food every day is sold at this shop. And then the money from it is Lord Jagannath's money. <laughs> so, and on average, as I said before, on average, there's about 20,000 people that are coming there and they're purchasing this food because it is a wonderful, wonderful treat, spiritual treat to um, have some of this prashadam from Lord Jagannath. But no matter how many pilgrims, no matter how many people come to that shop every day, there's always enough. It's, it's, all, it's magical. That's what it is. Because if anybody, you know, any of your devotees have ever owned a shop, you do run out of things. Supermarkets do run out of things, no matter how much things are carefully worked out on computers, you know, and, uh, and things like that. They do run out of things. At Lord Jagannath's Happiness Mart, there's always enough for people there. And the food is, is very traditionally um, uh, packaged. It's not packaging as we know it today. A lot of little clay pots, 
little clay pots and um, it'll have rice in it. Um, it'll have some, or some yogurt. It'll have different preparations in these little clay pots and they're tied up with like straw, things like that. One of our um, friends, well, it's more than a friend, Paranda Das, who was instrumental in, in introducing us, husband and I and our friends to, um, to Krishna and he introduced us simultaneously to Srila Bhaktivedanta and our spiritual master, our Srila Prabhupada. So when we were living in Malaysia, we lived in Malaysia for about five years and he was <clears throat> in America, he would fly over a couple of times and he would come and stay with us and then from there it was a, he could then go to India. So he came over to stay with us one time and he brought his little deities. He had a deity of Lord Nishrimadev and Prahlad Maharaja, little. And he brought them over because my husband, Jamunadas, is an artist and he does beautiful jobs of repainting deities. And so he brought his little deities um, for uh, Jamunadas to repaint while he went to India. So he goes to India and Jamunadas does a beautiful job repainting his deities and when he comes back he brings a present and he had been to Jagannath Puri and he brought back these little pots of um, yogurt preparations and so there was these little pots there and he brings them into the house you know to, to give us and we had a neighbor this lady who lived in a compound just near us but she was very very nice hearted lady and so she was in our house. She was attracted to Krishna, no doubt about it. And when he came in and he got these little pots out and he lined them all up, she immediately saw them. And she said, oh, what is that? And he said, oh, this is special food that I brought back from India. It's divine food that has been offered to the Lord. And she said, oh, oh, please, can I have some? And she just... She just couldn't help herself. She went, grabbed one of the pots of yoga and she immediately consumed it. And we all just had these wonderful smiles on our faces. She got to have Lord Jagannath's Mahaprasadam. So Lord Jagannath's Mahaprasadam goes all over India. People go there and, and purchase it to give as presents to people. And, and it's sent overseas. Amazing. This is his, his Mahaprasadam distribution going on. And the prashadam is of two types. There's wet. So remember, they're all in these little pots and, and um, um, sort of straw wraparounds and that. There's wet, which includes ghee rice, mixed rice, ginger rice, sweet dal, um, plain dal mixed with vegetables and mixed curries. Or there's dry ones, which include sweets. So it's really the, the dry ones that Paranda had brought back because they last longer. It's known that they'll last a few days easily. So without electricity and machines, the skilled chefs work under oil lamps over open wood fires. Every day they prepare many different dishes and offer them to Lord Jagannath. Furthermore, giving only one day's notice, the chefs can prepare a full meal for up to 10,000 guests at one sitting. So this is amazing. Um, distribution of Lord Jagannath's Maha Prashadam. So Lord Jagannath, is, it's really wonderful to hear about him and, and just seeing him. You know, we had a friend, Don Stone, um, he left his body a few years ago and he went home to Krishna. And we know that because Srila Prabhupada rang Jamunadas. Jamunadas had been assisting Don at the end there. Um, and he rang Jamunadas to tell him that Don went home to Krishna. So Srila Prabhupada is so kind. Um, he, he knew Jamunadas would like to know that to hear that but to hear it from him so it's not guessing it's not sentimentality or whatever it, 
Prabhupada told him. Don went home and Jaminda started crying on the phone. He was so happy for Don and Prabhupada just started chanting to Jaminda. So it was very nice. So, but how Don started chanting was in the 1970s. Um, he's an Aussie boy, actually born in Brisbane. And, um, but he went to New Zealand and he was hitchhiking around in New Zealand. He'd never heard of Krishna or anything. This was when, you know, not many people in the Western countries, Australia and New Zealand, knew much about Krishna. So he's hitchhiking and these, these um, young devotee uh, guys pick him up, hitchhiking him, and they take him to his their house and they say, oh, you can stay the night if you like. Don goes, oh, great. And he had a sleeping bag with him. They said, oh, you can just sleep in the lounge room here. So he just pulls out his sleeping bag and he goes to sleep on the floor, as you did in those days. And um, he gets woken up early in the morning. It's still dark, okay? And um, this is New Zealand, right? It can, it can get cold there. And he peeks out of his sleeping bag and there's there's all these guys in the room, you know, the ones who picked him up, hitchhiked him, and they're playing these little instruments and they're singing. And he could see they, there was a candle, you know, this cupboard was open and there was this candle there. And he's going, what are they doing? It's not even, the sun hasn't even come up yet. What are they doing? And so he's looking to see what they're all looking at in the cupboard. And he looks in there and there's Jagannath, Balaram and Subhadra. And he sees them by the candlelight and he goes, oh, 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 amazing. He goes, oh, okay. And then he just goes back into his sleeping bag and gets a little bit more sleep. But that was his introduction, hearing chanting to Lord Jagannath. And when he saw Lord Jagannath, he said, oh, that smile immediately went to his heart, you know. So uh, Don became very devoted to Tusta Krishna Das there in New Zealand and, and um, Balakia and our Srila Prabhupada. He had a very successful life in the end and it all started with seeing that beautiful smile of Lord Jagannath and hearing the chanting to Lord Jagannath. So I hope that's been of interest to you. You know, there was one other... It's more of a somber story, if, if you want to put it that way. When we all lived in Sydney in the 1980s here in Australia, um, Shula, like I said probably previously, Srila Prabhupada came a number of times during that decade. And um, before he came one time, one of the ladies, the devotee ladies down there, she had met an Indian gentleman who'd come to Australia to live in Australia from India and she'd met him and then they'd gotten together and that and he was from a Brahmin family but he wasn't practicing any kind of spiritual life anymore he was eating meat he was um, there was nothing very much spiritual happening in his life but of course by the association with this devotee lady he was reviving some of the um, customs, spiritual customs he'd grown up with. And it turned out, she didn't know this at first, but then, because when he first met her, he was, he was just like a materialist, you know. He, um, but then as he, he saw that she was interested in spiritual life, and then, so he tries to impress her by telling her that he is from Jagannath Puri and he was born into a family that had generations for generations. They had been involved in a service to Lord Jagannath there in Puri. And um, then as you know, he was introduced to all the devotees there in, in uh, Sydney and that, he was trying to impress everybody with this, even though we could see that he wasn't really wasn't following very much. He didn't have a sadhana bhakti um, program in, in his own life or anything. He wasn't really doing anything. This was just like, you know. And then he started to sort of s consider us to be very um, poor devotees, poor in our practices. 
and you know we really didn't understand there's all these brahminical rules and regulations and we weren't following them and we weren't doing them and then he's starting to get really low so we're all just very tolerant of him um, probably for the sake of the the girl uh, but then Srila Prabhupada came and she takes him along to you know at a, a sort of a, like a a gathering it wasn't people from the public but you know we were all the devotees there with Srila Prabhupada and so she brought him there uh, to introduce him to Prabhupada and maybe she'd written up to Prabhupada before it but somehow or other Prabhupada knew his past I mean his family history and so he came there and he was very arrogant in front of our Srila Prabhupada you know he was doing the I am knowing Krishna and more sort of thing you know that can uh, some Brahmins can very easily fall into that trap and so he's been very arrogant towards Prabhupada and a lot of the devotees there were getting hmm it's, it's one thing for him to be like that to all of us but to see him doing that to our spiritual master no 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 we, we did not like it and Prabhupada could see that we were getting kind of like antsy and he's he told everybody don't worry it's okay it's okay it's okay like he signal to everybody just don't worry about it you know um, so to please Srila Prabhupada what he wanted and we didn't do anything then after they left Srila Prabhupada explained in a very humble way he explained that this gentleman had been born into a family that for generation after generation you can't even count how many generations that they had been serving Lord Jagannath and he just felt so so much humility towards their service to Lord Jagannath. He didn't care if the person was being arrogant to him. He didn't care at all. He was he was paying homage to their service to Lord Jagannath. And so that was really a a wonderful insight for us into Srila Prabhupada's humility. But you know, also when you're thinking in terms of Lord Jagannath, um, Lord Jagannath does have all these wonderful devotees. Not all the Brahmins are, are these intimate devotees of, of Lord Jagannath. Some of them are just nonsense. But some of them are intimate friends and intimate service, servants of Lord Jagannath. So, and we don't have the eyes to know which are which. We don't have that knowledge. So we just offer our respects to all the Brahmins who are looking after Lord Jagannath every single day of their life until they get too old to do it anymore. And Rathiyatra is a wonderful example of that because they all come together. They're all there. The whole of Puri and all the Brahmins there and they're doing all sorts of ceremonies. The Lord Jagannath. So for tomorrow, there may be some celebrations in your areas. Um, so with an open heart and a very merry heart, worship Lord Jagannath, particularly in the circumstances that there won't be Rathiyatra over in Puri. So make Lord Jagannath happy here, wherever you are in Australia, in the Philippines, whatever country you're in, make Lord Jagannath happy and offer him, offer him your heart. So thank you very much everybody. Have a wonderful time tomorrow. Namaste everybody. Rama, Rama, Rama.